Thank you. Hello. Hi. This feels like I'm in like a creepy uncle's living room, right? <laughs> but like in a good way. Like he's like probably rich and like has like a wine cellar or whatever, like that kind of guy. Um, hi, you guys all work here? No, what are we doing what are we, with our lives? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, I like living in New York. One thing I like living about living here is that the deli guys are always like very honest with you. They're always gonna tell you how it is. Like I was buying toilet paper and I had four rolls, didn't wanna have to go back, okay? So I was like, let me get it all done. And uh, I was standing in line and the deli guy goes, somebody's got to go. And I was like, who, me? No, no, I don't poop. These are for my family, <laughs> I swear. Um, I, God, I moved to New York because I really thought it was just gonna be like the hit musical Rent. Like, I really thought that. Uh, and I was like, I'm gonna move to New York, I'm gonna live in the Lower East Side, I'm gonna be an artist, and all my friends are gonna have AIDS. AIDS was so cool, though. <laughs> AIDS was so cool and fancy. Um, but it's not like that. It's more like, I live in Brooklyn, I have four jobs, and my cat has scabs. <laughs> she does. She, like, has food allergies. I don't know. If anybody has any tips for cat scabs, please let me know. <laughs> it's not good. Um, I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania, and I was driving home recently, and as I was pulling in to town, I saw a sign that said, Fresh juice sold here. And I was like, oh my God, my town finally got a juice bar. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and then as I got closer, I realized the sign said fresh vape juice sold here. <laughs> a whole store for your vape. <laughs> but that's great though, because it's like, at least they're bringing small business back to my town. Because before it was just like Walmart and meth. So that's great. <laughs> There's the vape industry is booming now, so that's good. When I was home, my stepdad was like, Sue, and my I have to tell you, my stepdad is the kind of guy who, when you're talking to him, will trim his nose hair mid-conversation. <laughs> that's what we're dealing with. Lovely guy, but that is what we're dealing with. So when I was talking to him, he was like, uh, Sue, you live in New York. You'll know this word I heard on TV can you tell me what heteronormative means? I was like, well, Tom, it's like operating from a place of heterosexuality is a norm and we're not supposed to do that anymore because gender and race are fluid and like Caitlyn Jenner and all that. And his eyes glazed over and he was like, yeah, I still don't know what it means. I was like, don't worry, buddy, it's a new word. And he was like, oh, like selfie? <laughs> you're lucky you're not my real dad. You're very lucky. Um, I should tell you about my mom, too. I hope she never sees this. Uh, <laughs> she uh, is, okay, so I'm engaged and she is helping with the wedding, which is great and I'm very grateful, but I'm trying not to be upset that she didn't help with college. <laughs> It's like, I see where your priorities are. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, she, and she asked, she was like, I just want to get the venue's cancellation policy. I just want to know their cancellation policy. <laughs> and she asked me that like five times. And I was like, Mom, we've been together for six years. We're not going to break up. And she was like, no, I don't mean that. I just mean if, in case one of you gets cancer. <laughs> like okay great mom and she was having a yard sale and she was texting me and she goes sue i just sold your pogo stick there goes a piece of your childhood <laughs> and i wrote back mom that's so sad and she was like she was like uh, uh and she was like how's your day going and i was like it's great we have beautiful weather here she wrote back cold weather is on its way <laughs> I was like, all right, mom, I'll see you later. I love you. And she was like, I love you too, even though it's hard sometimes. <laughs> I swear to God. But it's like, she's doing the best she, that she can because she's German, you know? So like, those people, her heritage isn't really known for its warmth and compassion. So she's doing her best. That's fine. Um, I'm gauged, yeah, the great thing about getting engaged is that you can stop like really trying in your relationship. 
So I've been afraid, like I am a serial sleep talker, so I've been afraid of talking in my sleep these past six years, um, in case I like say like a deep dark secret or something. <laughs> but my fiance told me that I said in the, in the middle of the night, he was like, you whispered in the middle of the night, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I was like, what? And, he, and then he said, he said, I said what? And you said, I love you, nothing. <laughs> And he was like, but like, haven't you thought about it? I was like, no, I've never thought about how I would kill you. And he was like, I have. I would smother you with a pillow. <laughs> I don't think that's normal. I don't think that's normal. And then I heard him say, I love you so much. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. And then I realized he was talking to the cat. <laughs> he was talking to the cat. He was like, yeah, you too, whatever. It's fine. He's great. Um, I am what you would call a freelance artist. Thank you. <laughs> Living the artistic rent dream. Um, so that means like I have a lot of jobs, but never any money, ever, ever. One job that I had over the summer was teaching improv to high school students. And we were playing this improv game called stretch and share. It's very simple, stretch and share. You stretch and you share. Um, and one girl shared that she had four brothers and two dads, and I was like, as the teacher, I said this to my student. I was like, can I ask you a personal question? She was like, yeah. I was like, what'd you do when you got your period? And she was like, Google. I was like, that makes so much sense. Why didn't I think of that? I went to the grocery store, I stole Super Plus tampons, and I was like, why don't these things fit? <laughs> Super Plus tampons are the really big ones, okay? They don't fit in a little kid's vagina. It's like sticking a corn cob into a juice box. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Uh, because they don't teach you anything about your body in high school. Like my, th what they taught me was like, don't have sex because you're a dirty whore. And that's all <laughs> that I learned about my body in school. So I was like, oh my God, I'm never doing that. And then I went online and I looked at porn and my computer caught a virus. <laughs> it's like, you're fucked, no matter what. Um, Another freelance job I have is I professionally write Instagram captions for a living. So, like, that's a job you can have. Thank you, yes. In fact, in fact, if you are an English major in college, that's the only job you can have, really. Uh, it's, oh God, it's so weird. Uh, they take it so seriously. Well, okay, let me tell you this first. It's a tough place to work because all day people are like, hey, Sue, did you get my email? Hey, Sue, can you write this Pinterest caption? Hey, Sue, all these statistics. And it's really confusing because there's a Korean girl in the office named Hey, Sue. <laughs> so it's really hard. There is, I swear. She's mean. But like, I think they have different values than I do. Uh, here's how I know. I got a text message over the weekend that said, Sue, we have a hashtag emergency. <laughs> Our client needs a hashtag for their outlet malls. And I was like, you don't know what an emergency is. <laughs> you do not know what it is. <laughs> And then I uh, was writing a caption about coffee. I'm still bitter about this. And I used three exclamation marks because, you know, like when you are, have coffee, you're excited and you use exclamation marks, whatever. So I was writing the caption and uh, my boss said, Sue, three exclamation marks? I just don't think we can take this risk. <laughs> I was like, that's a risk to you? Do you know that I touch subway poles for fun? Sometimes I use my iPhone without a case. Okay, call me when we're out of iced coffee. That's a risk to me. Yeah, I don't wanna brag to you guys. I don't wanna like show off or whatever, but I do manage the Facebook page for the biggest coconut water brand in North America. Thank you. I am a big deal. <laughs> and like every time I post, someone posts, uh, responds to my post and says, uh, I hate coconut water. Coconut water sucks. Fuck you. I swear. And I sent, it, I sent it to my boss and I was like, what should we do about this? And she was like, oh, it must be almond milk trolling again. <laughs> I was like, let's put this in perspective, okay? There are people in this world 
who don't even know that you can milk an almond. And then I realized I was having the whitest conversation I've ever had in my entire life. Oh God, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, I get, I have to take the train at rush hour and, uh, oh wait, let me tell you another thing about working there. Okay, so this is how I know that I don't fit in is uh, my new worker, coworker moved to the financial district and she was talking about her new apartment and her doorman and everybody's like, ooh, tell me more, tell me more. And I was like, I heard somebody got beheaded there last week. <laughs> That's how I know, like, office life is not for me. <laughs> not for me at all. So I always ride uh, the train at rush hour, and the train just makes me unreasonably mad. I will get mad at anyone for anything. I saw a lady who was reading, and I was like, oh, she's reading a book? Who does she think she is? She's better than me? Might I remind you I was an English major? So I, I read books voluntarily for four years. You can say that I paid to read books. Um, but yeah, it makes me mad. And uh, I hate writing in at rush hour because as a short person, you're always in someone's armpit. Like they always are reaching up and it's the worst. Um, so this guy knocked me over, this like suit guy. And he was like, there's more room in the middle. And I was like, watch it, asshole. And everyone looked at me like I was weird because I said something. And despite what you may think, I don't want to be looked at like that, okay? So I learned my lesson the next time I took the train at rush hour. Some preteen got on with a full-sized beanbag chair. <laughs> I shit you not a beanbag chair. A chair made out of beanbags, okay? I did not say a word. I took his picture and I sent it to Gothamist like a real New Yorker. <laughs> that is what we do, people. That is what we do. I'll tell you one more thing about my stupid life. Um, I used to teach yoga here in New York City. Um, and when you say that you teach yoga, people make so many assumptions about you. They assume that you're like into astrology and that you like eat granola and that you're like a slutty pretzel. <laughs> Those are all true things about yoga teachers. Um, but the hardest part about teaching yoga is pretending that farts aren't funny. People fart in yoga all the time. I had this guy in my class, white guy, with the chiseled jaw of a rich man. And he farted so loudly. And he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I was like, buddy, don't be sorry. It happens all the time. I should be sorry. I'm gonna tell this to everyone. <laughs> all right, you guys are great, I'm Sue Smith. <laughs> Sue Smith, everybody. Keep it going, Sue Smith.